Well, Ross, thanks for joining us. Can I first of all ask, what was said that led to your reaction and your red car? I wanted to wait to talk to you, Dave, rather than doing it to, uh, to Sky. But um, first of all, I think there's, there's a couple of things I wanted, I knew I was going to address before the game, and that was Scott Lindsay, not too many people will be aware, but Scott Lindsay, a previous uh, member of staff at, at Forest Green, lost his wife this week. So uh, I wanted to make sure that I acknowledge that and, uh, and send our condolences to him and his family. Um, obviously suffering real loss at the moment so I wanted to address that and wish him and his family the very best um, and then the second thing obviously is, is what happened during the first half um, I got I got uh, I got told I was an imposter um, in terms of um, being in and around the environment that I'm in but it's great because I've spent most of my life being an imposter didn't play football didn't have a football career and I've worked extremely hard to get myself to where I am and where I have been uh, in my coaching career. So it's, it's a thing that has been thrown at me quite regularly, uh, which, which doesn't affect me anymore because I quite like it, it's my thing. Um, a lot of people don't know my name, a lot of people don't know who I am. So I can accept that bit. But to follow it up with who do I think I am, just in Edinburgh, is something that I'll never accept. And I suppose that I have to ex uh, apologise to everybody associated with the club, the fans, the players, which I've just done in there, for getting sent off because uh, it's obviously has an effect on the team and it, and it shows a lack of discipline, which I would never want my players to show. However, at the same time, if there's anybody out there that wants to try and get me sent off again in the past, use that phrase, because for me, it's um, totally unacceptable. Uh, I knew of Mark Cooper's behaviour at times and the way that he approaches different people. Today, show me what it was all about. It's a disgrace. There's no other word to say. When, when I heard what was said, I felt very angry, and I'm sure that every single member of the late night faithfuls feel exactly the same. Yeah, and Dave, I, I got sent off for throwing my chewing gum at him, and ultimately, that is something that I deserve. You can't do that sort of thing. However, it was either that or do something a lot more aggressive, which would have been even more naive of me, and I probably would spend a lot more time in the stands than perhaps I'm going to. Um, it was the best way for me to deal with it right at that, at that moment of time. My blood's still boiling. Um, yeah, it, it, I suppose the further I go with it, the more, more, uh, more, more difficult I'm going to make it. So you know, I, everybody's aware of exactly what happened now and, and it's a case of, of, of focusing on, on what the game looked like and, and, and where we fell short today. It did feel, though, that Forest Green's tactics in the first half were to wind up late <laughs> noise. And were the O's a little naive in their response? Spot on. Exactly right, because we called it. Um, we all know what Ibo Adams is about, and we know what he's when he comes back here. What what um, what what it, what it gets it, it brings out in, our, in us and our supporters. It certainly gets gets me in the same way. So we we'll warn the players of how that would be, and we we sort of fell into that trap a little bit, um, which is obviously disappointing because we've given him the opportunity to to, to unsettle us and, and and ultimately lose the game of football. So yeah, we've got to get better at that. We've got uh, they come here with a game plan today, and, and ultimately in the end they've executed it in terms of getting the points. So disappointed in, in the way that we let ourselves down like that. But I think also at the same time, Dave, there were some mistakes that, that led to goals that that have let us also let us down today. But the passion, the commitment, and above all the character in the second half that was remarkable. Yeah, um, off, a very, off the back of a very difficult first half, you come in now disappointed that you get a point, which is um, quite crazy, really, because you think at half-time sometimes everyone just lets the game sort of you know, fizzle out to a degree. We didn't do that. Uh, I asked the players to show some character and some spirit and you know, give the people that were here something to cheer about. They certainly did that, and we're a couple of inches away from, from getting a point, which in the end, I suppose, as bad as we were in the first half, the second half we probably deserved it. Leon Gold back. You've missed him, haven't you? Yeah, uh, I'm probably going to get a pat on the head from the physio or, or, or something of the opposite in terms of the amount of time that I left him out there. We were, um, Joby and I were back and forth on the microphone discussing whether we needed to bring him off because we obviously didn't want to jeopardise him getting another injury. But I thought he was lively today. He's obviously not 100% match fit and the plan was to give him a few less minutes than, um, than we did. But, uh, you know, it's great to see him back out there and he, he contributed a hell of a lot today. Same sort of discussions about Jamie Turley? Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, probably tells in terms of the amount of training he's done without injury. Probably a bit, a little bit better prepared. He's got 90 minutes under his belt when we went over to um, to Hendon last week. So probably in a little bit more of a better state. Tiring towards the end. And he was another one that we sort of discussed about, do we, don't we? But we thought he might put a, put a ball in the box or, or get on the end of a cross. Uh, that might, might, you know, might see us get us back in the game. So that was the, the reason we kept him on it. And thankfully, so far, the reports are that neither of them are suffering anything. I can remember Justin telling me they're not substitutes, they're game changers. And Jordan Maguire Drew almost was. Yeah, yeah oh, he was. He was. I think we have to give him and a number of the players a credit for the second half that the way we went out there. It's a spot on <laughs> comment. 
I've never heard that before, but I think that is it's right. And some discussions and, and some reviews that I've had about myself and the way that I work this week have certainly been that when you make a substitute, you don't always need to make a change to the shape. Um, and, and certainly with, Jay, uh, with Jordan coming on, it wasn't a drastic change in terms of that. It just made us a little bit probably more positive in the way we went, went out and went after Forest Green. So I'm delighted with the way that he performed in the second half. And, it, and what he does is he, he gives me a reminder as to you know, why maybe potentially I shouldn't have taken him out of the team for the weekend. You haven't got a game next weekend, of course. And psychologically, that second half performance was so important as you look ahead to two weeks to work with these players. 100%. Um, two weeks in terms of the next league game, but two weeks to get a fantastic opportunity opportunity to go and play in the next round of the cup and the next round of the cup against a good opposition which we've already come up against league one opposition this year already so gives us a, a real uh, real chance to build towards that I'm really really uh, confident that Connor Wilkinson will get time on the pitch in that one I'm really confident that Joe Widdison will do as will James Dayton probably another opportunity for us to build on Lee and Jamie Turley's time as well so you know if, if training over the next t- 10 days goes to plan we'll have a very healthy squad to uh, to prepare and choose from for for that but probably uh, without from from everyone's point of view the importance of that, of that next Oldham game it's a massive period for us finally for me Ross will the club be making a complaint about what was said I would very much expect so uh, Dave but I, I, I suppose it's one of those things you make a complaint um, does it do anything about it I think morally um, is the bigger thing that we all need to learn from here I think it, it, there'll be people looking in the mirror tonight that take, have to take a good long hard look at themselves